All right. So my study is about a quantitative. Uh, it's a quantitative study of cognitive differences in religious extremism. So uh, this is the abstract. Uh, the present research opens new doors to the study of theology in relation to psychology. So what exactly is it? Theology is basically the study of religion, and it helps to understand the varying attributes of individuals in different levels of religiosity. Uh, different levels of religiosity here is. Uh, the normal population and extremists. Uh, so uh, our basic idea of extremism uh, comes from basically uh, when I say extremism to you, you must be thinking of uh, uh, especially religious extremism. You might be thinking of Taliban or uh, ISIS or something like that. But extremist in itself is not a bad term. Extremism just means that an individual is in an extreme spectrum of political opinion. That's all it means. Uh, when this extremism is the cause for hostility, it is when it becomes a problem. So I wanted to tackle uh, uh, this issue, uh, especially individuals. For example, there's a lot of uh, um, disparities and violence between Muslims and Hindus in India and also Islamists outside India. Uh, so I wanted to uh, ask the question as to, is there any cognitive difference that makes them uh, that we need to study about within extremists? Uh, which will help us better understand what uh, methods we can use to uh, rehabilitate them. So basically, uh, these were the different variables in my study. Inductive reasoning, which is uh, the process of data observation, pattern recognition, and generalization based upon those patterns. So for example, if you see here, uh, I can give you 10 seconds if you can find out what the correct answer is. You can write it in the chat box. All right. Uh, so uh, basically, inductive reasoning uses certain data observations and pattern recognition. So these uh, are more assumptions. These are predictive. These are unlike deductive, which are uh, uh, absolute in nature. Deductive reasoning is absolute in nature, and inductive reasoning is predictive in nature. Secondly, cognitive reflection is the ability or disposition of resisting a response that first comes to mind intuitively. That is the suppression of an erroneous answer. So basically, for example, here, a bat and a ball cost $1.10 10 cents in total. The bat costs $1 more than the ball. How much does the ball cost? So in your head, you must be thinking the ball costs 10 cents. While it's not true, because uh, the ball actually costs 5 cents because it's uh, uh, 5 cents and the bat costs $1.05 cents because... Uh, when you add both of them, then it becomes $1.10. If the ball is already $0.10 cents and $1 more than the ball, then it becomes $1.20. It takes five machines to pay, uh, make, or in, in five minutes to make five widgets. How long does 100 machines take to make 100 widgets? Uh, if an intuitive answer would be 100 minutes, while the actual answer or rational answer is five minutes because it's the same amount of machines making the same amount of widgets. Uh, so thinking styles are... Uh, basically of two kinds. They are rational and they are experiential. So basically, rational are those in which you use your conscious uh, cognitive skills to come up with an answer. By experiential skills are something that are absolutely intuitive to you. They are actually gut feelings that you have from day-to-day -day life. They are more unconscious in nature. Uh, and uh, then comes religion. So religion is a system of systems, uh, symbols, which act as uh, act to establish powerful, pervasive, and long-lasting rules. What this means is that uh, these are basically certain ideologies and rules which are long-term and pervasive, and uh, they can be a cause for an individual's motivations. And now, extremists are those that are extremely religious and, like I said, ra radicalized in terms of religious ideologies. What this means is uh, it. Uh, it does not mean, it does not say hostility anywhere. So extremist is a person who holds extreme political or religious uh, views. But uh, here we are trying to find out individuals who also have a psychological predisposition to extreme faith. As it is said that while all extremists are not terrorists, all terrorists are extremists. So uh, we have gone through this. These are the different uh, uh, you know, the differences between experiential system and rational system. Uh, experiential system is more holistic, rational system is more analytical. Uh, one is more outcome oriented, it's more pleasure and pain oriented, and rational system is more process oriented and logical uh, reason oriented. 
so uh, these were, these were my hypothesis to find out if there exists a difference of inductive reasoning, cognitive reflection, and thinking styles between extremely religious, which is extremist, and non-religious individuals. And these are the four hypotheses. There's a significant difference in inductive reasoning, cognitive reflection, rational thinking, and experiential thinking. Um, the following statistical analysis were used. So uh, mean and standard deviation was used, how this method or methodology was actually used in the sense that I went to different websites, uh, for example, puma.com, uh, hindudharmaforums.com, and the true Christian subreddit of uh, uh, Reddit. And I sent out these questionnaires, and these are actually individuals who are actually devoted to their particular religion. Now, uh, mind you, one limitation of the study would be later on, which I'll uh, talk about, is that uh, we are just looking at religion. We are not looking at what kind of religion. So we are looking at religion as a whole. We are not looking at uh, Hindus or Islams or Christians. Uh, so uh, statistical uh, aspects of data to identify individuals who are extremely religious. So individuals on these forums who were two standard deviations, uh, uh, who scored two standard deviations more in centrality of religiosity scale were treated as extremists within the study. Cronbeck's alpha was used to in check the internal consistency. All the scales were, uh, uh, you know, fit uh, to use. All of them were acceptable. All of them had a Cronbeck alpha of more than seven. And independent sample t-test was used, uh, and uh, it was used as to change uh, to check uh, the, you know, uh, differences between an individual uh, on normal, uh, you know, the normal population, normal sample, and the religious population, uh, plus the standard deviation. So tools used were cognitive reflection tests, which I, uh, the three items of which I showed above, Higgins matrices test, one item of which I showed above, a rational experiential inventory and centrality of religiosity scale. Out of these three, two have their own dimensions. Uh, rational and experiential inventory has four dimension and centrality of religiosity scale has five dimension. So these uh, are, uh, I will be adding them in four, post hoc analysis. Now the procedure was uh, certainly simple. Uh, the research was done on jot form. The link to fill the form was posted on multiple Indian online discussion forums and chat rooms of different religions, like I said previously. Uh, now they were asked to continue only if they thought they were proficient in English so as to reduce the um, uh, the uh, issues or uh, the errors within the study. And they were informed that the form administration will occur in two sessions. Why did it occur in two sessions? There was a uh, research a long time back conducted in Portugal, uh, which basically uh, first included a intelligence test and then included a religiosity scale. Uh, so what it showed that in an intelligence test used before a religiosity scale will reduce the uh, amount or uh, reduce your religious uh, religiosity scores. The scores on CRS will reduce uh, if uh, administered or intelligence scale, uh, scale before that. So input of a name was optional while demographic information details pertaining to their email, phone number, sex, age, religion, etc. were compulsory. And uh, intensity of belief of religion was also compulsory. Uh, now, the first session only consisted of the administration of centrality of religiosity scale. And then the second religion, uh, second uh, consisted of uh, individual uh, of uh, the, the, CR, uh, the CRT, which is the cognitive reflection test, um, the uh, inductive reasoning scale, which is HMT, and uh, the uh, experiential and rational thinking. Uh, and a fortnight later, the second links were also sent, and in, uh, only to the individuals who were two standard deviations away uh, within the uh, extremely uh, within the religious group. So they were treated as extremists. So now their scores were uh, compared to a normal sample taken within India. Uh, so uh, this was the standard deviation. So the uh, as you can see, there's a the group statistics. The mean is different. One limitation is uh, another limitation is that that extreme uh, that non extremists are almost double as extremists, but because the number of uh, because there were only forty nine individuals above the two standard deviations within the study, so I could only take forty nine of them. Uh, so this is the independent sample data. So as you can see, all uh, rationality, experientiality, uh, inductive reasoning, and cognitive reflection, all of them are significant. Uh, in the sense that in CRS, the mean difference was 38.9, which is a lot con uh, considering that the scale itself is not um, uh, more than 100. 
and uh, rationality is uh, there's a difference in rationality up to 13 that uh, individuals that are let or normal have could uh, almost 13 difference uh, in uh, their rationality in terms of uh, individuals who are extremists and experientiality uh, is also mentioned here hmt is mentioned you can check out the uh, mean differences as shown uh, so these were basically the discussion uh, rationality was significantly more for non extremist group than extremist group at a uh, ratio of uh, at a uh, significance level of 0.01%. Experientiality was less for non-extremist groups, un uh, unlike the first one. Then inductive reasoning was significantly more for non-extremist groups, and cognitive reflection was significantly more uh, for no uh, for uh, non-extremist groups. So, uh, what is the significance of this study? So, psychology of religion is a subject which has been uh, of importance due to the need to resolve conflict between different religious groups. Uh, and especially to promote secularism development and reduce damage caused by extreme extremist hostile behavior. So again, if you want to study an elephant, which is an individual who is hostile here, uh, you have to study the mammals first, which is the whole area, a whole uh, uh, ecosystem of um, extremists. Now, uh, as I said previously, all extremists are not hostile. The results of this study could be used to understand that extremely religious individuals are on ad average attributed with extreme increased uh, experientiality and decreased rationality, thus using appropriate techniques incorporating their strengths to understand and manage them can be recommended. So uh, what does this mean? Uh, cert uh, certain uh, there's a reason why, for example, racism in schools is, you know, uh, handled by uh, introducing a lot of individuals from different races together. This does not lead to rational thinking. This leads to uh, experiential learning. This is not rational learning. This is experiential learning. You learn unconsciously uh, due to the, your environment and due to your experiences. Similarly, we can show that someone, uh, it, uh, you know, uh, and it, uh, in this, Extremists were also higher in terms, uh, lower in terms of rationality than normal individuals, than normal religious individuals. Uh, what does this mean? That shoving rationality in the mouth of someone whose uh, who's engagement and ability of rationality is less than usually, which is uh, uh, found in the, sample, uh, in the norm, is uh, not an efficient way to solve a problem. What we need to do is we need to understand the experientiality part of the equation and go forward with that. Uh, so, uh, how could we do this? There are different ways of, uh, you know, rehabilitation, rehabilitation of extreme religious individuals who are hostile can be improved by exposing them to experiences that lead to experiential learning. For example, this could be done uh, through, you know, uh, exposure to different religions and cultures, uh, which could be active or passive. For example, individuals could, uh, those individuals could be in jail, those individuals could be identified in schools, those individuals could be identified at office. Uh, etc. And we can also do one more thing, which is that, uh, uh, I mean, these are just suggestions, we can use psychoactive drugs like LSD and psilocybin to uh, give them those certain experiential uh, experiences, which will help them learn. Uh, so this obviously will be under the guided infrastructure and the studies on this have not been conducted yet. This is just my suggestion relating to all the review of literature. It might also explain the over-reliance of religious individuals on religious texts to understand right and wrong rather than analyzing and coming to their own conclusions. Uh, cognitive reflections seem to be comparatively lower so, uh, for extremely religious um, uh, individuals. So this would mean that uh, an individual uh, who is a, an extremist religious uh, has a higher tendency to jump on the first intuitive answer that comes to them without actually going through the whole rational process of asking if this is the answer. So uh, I think teaching that to extremists and uh, you know in environment where they can be taught uh, will be helpful and the comparatively higher reliance of experiential thinking by religious extremists, like I said, the gut feeling is more than someone who identify as uh, uh, so uh, that this would confirm by an increased understanding of science decreases an individual's religiosity. So uh, the increase in someone attributing their um, uh, using the in, uh, inductive skills would hence lead to, like I said previously, it actually led to the reduction in an individual religiosity score. Additionally, the study could also be implemented to better attribute religious terrorism to cognitive differences. 
Uh, so uh, instead of viewing them that, uh, you know, they have a different ideology, uh, why, uh, I, I believe we can view them as some people who are, have absolutely different experiences and learn from the surrounding in an extremely different way than what normal uh, in, uh, and these predispositions can be, you know, biological, they can be psychological, they can be cultural, these predispositions can be uh, in numerous ways. But the fact is, matter of fact is that they do have these uh, predispositions. Uh, lastly, before I end my uh, presentation, I would just like to talk about the limitations. The limitation is that the population ratio is different. Uh, so uh, the ratio is that uh, 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 non-extremists are almost double as that of extremists and also uh, I have not differentiated in terms of the religions, but uh, in fact, even the religious ratios are different within the study. Uh, secondly, uh, the extremist group sample of, uh, uh, so the ex uh, non-extremist group sample was taken from India, but the extremist group sample was taken from uh, online forums. And these online forums can be accessed by anyone in the world. So this, uh, these are the two limitations which I, which I can think of. post hoc and this, uh, Research is yet premature and post hoc analysis will further help, uh, you know, improve this research. Thank you.